Hello and welcome from the technical support team at DI. Using the DI system takes some practice. In this short video series of explanation, we will go over the two most important points of operation so you are clear on how to get the best results when you first begin to use your DI. If you are well practiced using an ophthalmoscope, the DI works the same way. You must get as close as you can to the pupil, one centimeter, at a slight angle so you can see the red glow from the reflection of the fundus and find the optic disc. The good news is that the DI lens eliminates corneal glare so it should be easier to capture good scans of the posterior pole of the eye. Chapter 2 Choosing Your Exam Type The DI application offers two types of exams, multi-shot and video. Video is preferred when learning how to use your DI because it allows for an extended time to view the posterior, including the optic disc and surrounding structure while getting used to aiming the lens. Upon conducting an exam, it is best to take 30 second videos so the file does not become too big. Take several videos, save the ones you want and discard the rest. Click on retinal screening. Write in patient's name. Choose right or left eye. Choose video. Click Start Examination. It's that easy. Chapter 3 Viewing and Scanning the Midriatic Eye. A dilated eye is easier to scan when learning how to use your DI. A dilated eye provides a wider field of view, about 20 degrees or more, so it is easier to aim and find the optic disc. There are important steps that need to be followed so that your smartphone camera will focus properly to ensure crisp and in focus results. Let's demonstrate this procedure now. Put the lens on if you haven't already and slowly approach the eye. It is very important to practice the following procedures so that the autofocus of your smartphone camera has time to settle and be in focus before you start the exam. The autofocus of the smartphone camera will begin to adjust as you move closer to the pupil. At about six inches to the eye, click the red button to start the video and move the lens so that it is close to the pupil as possible, one centimeter. When you see the red reflex from the eye, the DI has been correctly aligned and focused. To view the right eye, hold the camera vertically. For the left eye, hold the camera horizontally so the patient's nose will not block your attempt to get the lens as close as possible. On the screen, all you should see is the outer edge of the iris and the pupil. You should see a red glow, and by angling a little bit, like an ophthalmoscope, the optic disc should come into view. Once you see the optic disc, a video acquisition protocol would be to pan the retina, starting from the posterior pole and then moving to the upper, nasal, inferior, and nasal peripheral retina to the equator, allowing you to record more structure of the eye than what a single image might capture. Chapter 4 Viewing and Scanning an Undilated Eye Choose myotic eye where you will see three choices depending on the refractive error of your patient. There are on-screen instructions explaining how to lock the autofocus mechanism of your smartphone for all three choices prior to conducting a retinal exam. In this chapter, we will just discuss what to do when examining the emetropic eye. DI delivers a field of view of 5 to 8 degrees when examining an undilated eye. It is best to start with a dimly lit room but not too dark, so the camera focus can aim at a fixed object on the wall or at the edge of a door frame so the autofocus can begin to settle. Follow the screen instructions. As you may have experienced taking regular pictures with your smartphone, when you aim at the image or mountain view, you must have noticed the autofocus moving in or out until it finally settles and the image on the screen is crisp and in focus. Sometimes this autofocus function can take up to 10 seconds to settle, so do not be in a hurry because if you lock the focus before it has settled, you will have a blurry screen to start and blurry exam when finished. Should you not wait long enough, you will notice right away when close to the pupil that the camera is out of focus. If the screen is out of focus, press the back button and start the exam over again. In the early stages of learning how to take scans of an undilated eye, you need practice before attempting to record videos. Chapter 5. The camera lens should be one centimeter from the pupil. Often, first-time users are too far away from the pupil. 
Too far away can be three to five centimeters, far enough that you will not see much of the posterior. So don't be shy. Move the lens in as far as possible without touching the eye, so all you see is the outer edges of the iris on the outer sides of the screen. The closer you are, the greater the field of view. Just like looking through a keyhole, the closer your eye is to the keyhole, the more field of view. Same when aiming at the pupil. As you get used to watching and waiting for the focus to settle, you will get constantly better scans. Training yourself to move the lens in as close as possible so that you increase the field of view is also a very important learning curve.